um, let's get on with it. Looking forward to updating everybody on project progress. There may be some people who are joining either from far away or from those who haven't been following it. So I'd just like to do a very quick overview of what the International Estonian Centre is about. It is located in the heart of Toronto in what is known as the Bloor Street Culture Corridor. And that, if you can see my mouse, runs along Bloor Street, this green line. Across the street, we have the University of Toronto. Uh, we have the Royal Ontario Museum, the Ceramics Museum, Shoe Museum, Alliance Francaise, the Jewish Centre. And here is Tartu College. So it's right on Bloor Street. And this is the site of the International Estonian Center right here. Spadina Station is an interchange station just around the corner, then a, a quick walk from every compass direction. Within an 800 kilometer radius, of course, all of these large cities are here. It is that halfway point between Estonia and Silicon Valley. As we all know, the US and Canada are major trading partners and the border is porous. This here is a street view looking south along Madison. So Bloor Street, that, that major viaduct is here at the end of the street. This heritage building is part of the project. This is the parking lot that has been purchased. And this here is Tartu College. So it really is an Estonian center. It will be a hub. The idea of the center is that it is a U shape. So it is a large courtyard that provides for outdoor space. And of course, everyone's thoughts turn to the Raigoya Platz Christmas market and what we could do here in this open space. Uh, but with the compass direction pointing north in this direction, it's essentially melting the map of Estonia through that courtyard and creating a relief of, of the outline of Estonia. And that provides a context and continuity as traveling south on Madison toward the very busy Bloor Street and back again. So it allows that same kind of experience coming from all of these heritage homes. And this is a heritage district along Madison Avenue. And of course, also transitioning to the brutalist architect style of Tartu College, we have this foamed aluminum uh, that is to reminisce that Estonians do on New Year's Eve. And that will be the cladding along uh, the walls there. So we'll take, we'll talk about the uh, construction process and all of that. But in the meantime, what we have done, I would encourage you to please sign up for the monthly newsletter at estoniancenter.ca. It's at the bottom of the home page. And we have, in the meantime, onboarded some excellent new energy to the project, uh, the International Estonian Centre Inc. board. This is a, a news update that you can read on the estoniancenter.ca news page, as well as the Estonian Arts Centre, which is the charity associated with the project. And also we are ramping up our communications. Welcome Emily to the fold and we look forward to working with you. So today, now that we've gone over a project overview, we'd like to take a look at some of the progress that we've made and also provide you with a project update. So first I would like to give the floor over to Sur Sadik Thomas Luk, Estonia's ambassador to Canada in Ottawa. And I have to say, Thomas, wherever you go, uh, building projects seem to follow you. Tere, Thomas. First of all, uh, Helen, congratulations uh, on the wide participation. I think like five minutes ago, we were looking at the number of participants, uh, 40, now it's 112. It basically emphasizes how important the project is and how much interest it attracts. And also, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to be part of this um, project and tonight's uh, seminar. Let me just try to do a couple of points. Regarding the project, uh, I would like to say, and I'm a very strong believer, that this is a project of a century. A project that would uh, provide guidance to all Estonian diasporas across the world. And uh, I can uh, verify and then confirm that the project has been uh, promoted among the wide diaspora and audience in Estonia, including Foreign Minister Eva Maria Liemens, and she was very much excited about this project and uh, she supports it and she's uh, it all the well. I think what we have to do today is to uh, manage expectations uh, which are high and need to deliver. I know that there are differences uh, in the community regarding the new house, but I believe that we all together, and we emphasize all together, can make a transition from uh, 
dignified history of Estonian community uh, in Canada into a new, I would even say, era, into a new opportunities to continue for, uh, for Estonian community uh, in close cooperation with Estonian states in Canada for years to come. I really believe that this uh, new center would allow us not only to remember the past, but also involve, involve more young generation and uh, make it community house for Estonians, but also to Estonian friends in Canada and to be a bridge between Estonians in Canada, maybe North America and in Estonia. So this is my true belief and my strong support is behind this uh, project uh, as well. Um, here I would like to stop and uh, since I was also asked to say a few words in Estonian, then I just say Thank you for the kind words. I'd next like to turn it over to Haley Dome, who is the board chair of International Estonian Centre Inc. to take us through the branding exercise. Haley, over to you. Aita Helen. As we move into the phase that takes this project from concept to reality, our center was in need of a name and brand that supports the beauty and sophistication of the architecture itself. We began the branding process at the end of 2020. Um, the acronym IEC was not engaging and spelling it out was long. It stripped the center of an identity that would invite further curiosity. The branding objectives were clearly set to create depth and warmth to the center, to arouse curiosity, to set the building apart, making it attractive for events and conferences within our community and beyond, um, and to resonate with the uniqueness of the architecture. We committed to collecting feedback far and wide from all corners around the world through an interview and survey process that led us to define the center's new name and brand identity. After undertaking lengthy in interviews, it became apparent to our branding agency, Barefoot Creative, that we wanted a name to reflect who we are as a diaspora community that has several generations under our belt. A small community with big dreams, defined as digital, youthful, confident, fun, educated, professional, ambitious. Following the interview stage, we undertook a survey to reinforce derived assumptions of how Estonians locally and internationally attend, intend to use the center, as well as the kinds of activities they envision themselves attending along with what images and symbols best define Estonian culture. The survey results were consistent across demographics and locations. An overwhelming 85% of survey respondents felt the new center will engage families to participate, will present opportunities for international visitors, as well as be a location the community can share with friends, colleagues, and more. On this basis, we conducted a final survey based on the two names that kept resurfacing, Gota and Gestus, both with a strong and Nordic K sound and look. A big special thank you to Rina Kindlam and Lisa Garit, who are located in ASD, uh, for helping us generate names that met our branding objectives. Over two thirds of the 750 survey respondents from five continents resonated with the name Geskos, including spouses of Estonians. If you look at this slide in front of you right now, uh, the green line represents the Geskus name versus the blue line of Gota. And what we see is more of a strong decision from the community that Geskus, no matter what age group you're in, on the left side there, no matter what age group you're in, Geskus resonated the most. Um, and no matter what your background was, whether you're Estonian, you were married to an Estonian, you knew an Estonian, or you had no uh, connection to the Estonian community even, uh, Gesko still did resonate. So as we lay the foundation of a strong name that represents our Estonian community, we also present a name that will transcend to the local community we will serve. We welcome Gesko. The name Geskus not only reflects its direct translation of center, it is a compound word of who and where. 
This encompasses the diaspora that has a life and vitality outside of Estonia, that wishes to stay connected with each other locally within the Toronto bounds, as well as the diaspora community globally and with Estonia itself. The centre will be the guest school for us all. I'll stop here and pass the mic to Michael Ritti to take us through how this will look from a logo and visual perspective. Michael is a board member of the Estonian Art Centre, the charity associated with the project. Aita, Haley. In addition to Barefoot Creative, I would like to acknowledge Virve Alias, Ene Mikur, and Vive Torquiz in Toronto as well as Andres Salomets on the West Coast, each of whom played advisory roles in this process. The goal was to generate a visual identity that was simple, modern, and professional, paying homage to the global Estonian diaspora, who we are today, and who we will be in years to come. And so we worked through 13 different logo concepts. And after much discussion, and deliberation, we are pleased to unveil the new brand identity of Gescos. Any successful brand must tell a story. And this logo tells our story with clarity, strength, and nuance. At first glance, the lines are the crossroads of our diaspora and the passing of cultural values from one generation to the next. Estonians living abroad whether by force or by choice, face many crossroads along their life's journey. Each juncture requires adept decision-making, balancing the heart and the mind to make decisions for the greater good. The overlapping lines speak to our ability to pivot and seize opportunities. Fleeing Soviet occupation, working together to preserve our culture and our adopted homeland, building a new Estonian culture, one that was once a carbon copy but is now an independently evolving culture in which all Estonians can take pride. These are among the many pivotal moments in our shared history, which we represent in this visual identity. Another design element here is a distinct weaving pattern. This references many things. The art of weaving used in making traditional Estonian folk costumes, the meshing of our community's past with our future, the various intersections within the global Estonian diaspora, and the collaboration by us all, locally, nationally, and internationally, to create a space that honors the past while looking forward. Regarding color choice, a variety of colors were considered for the visual identity of the brand. And yet, the more we explored alternative color schemes, the greater the logic of the classic blue, black, white motif, and its strong resonance with the objectives of this facility. The decision was a no-brainer. The Gesco's name and logo will be used in all communications, such as the websites, promotional materials, and signage. This will create a strong and lasting brand while positioning the center as a cultural landmark that welcomes people of all cultural backgrounds to take part in and enjoy Estonian heritage. The name Gesco's is in all caps, in order to clearly differentiate Gescos the brand from the use of the word Gescos in other non-facility related contexts. When it comes to the logo, we have many options depending on the desired application of the logo and the word mark. A few of these can be seen here. So going forward, the center will be known as Gescos. We are transitioning to a new website, but for the time being, please keep using estoniancenter.ca and sign up for the monthly newsletter so that you can get Gescos news to your inbox. And with that, let's take a walk through Gescos. Welcome to Gescos, the International Estonian Centre opening in 2022 in the heart of Toronto, North America's fourth largest city. Designed by three-time Governor General award-winning architect Alar Gongatz, who explains the public courtyard that is shaped like the borders of Estonia itself. The centre's public courtyard reflects Estonians' connection to nature with greenery that can be enjoyed from every level. The courtyard space is also a way to give back to the city, a vibrant haven that celebrates all things Estonian. On the left is the Bistro, 
It will offer an Estonian-inspired menu and be a welcoming place to meet with friends or enjoy a cup of coffee in the sunny, sheltered courtyard. Geskus is fully accessible and proximate to the Spadina subway interchange station. For those who live locally, Geskus will be a regular destination whether to take children to Estonian school, go to choir practice, attend a concert or film, or take in a lecture. For Estonians locally, nationally and internationally, Geskus will be a natural place to gather for celebrations and events, share experiences, catch up with long-distance friends and make new connections. State-of-the-art technology will make concerts, classes accessible from any part of the world. The Grand Hall will be a multifunctional, acoustically engineered performance space that can seat 300 theatre style and boasts an adjacent commercial catering kitchen for formal events. The Heritage Building wing of Geskus will house a business accelerator on the main floor, office space on the second floor and a library with soaring ceilings on the third floor. The high ceilinged basement floor will feature a business centre and a 1600 square foot community room. The mezzanine floor has a music room that can double as a meeting room and the third floor boasts four classrooms. The rooftop garden is an event and learning space with unrivaled westerly views and a temporary tent with seating for 80. All of this within Toronto's Bloor Street Culture Corridor, the Culture and Academia District in Toronto. Geskos will be a dynamic hub, showcasing our rich heritage and promoting Estonian innovation. It is envisioned to be a vibrant gathering place for Estonians of all generations and backgrounds to connect celebrate and share our culture and achievements with each other and the world. Keep abreast of project progress at estoniancentre.ca. Sign up for the monthly newsletter and become a donor to help Geskus achieve its mission. It's more than a cultural centre, it's the heart of our community. So if we want to open this building in 2022, we have to get building. Uh, and so with all indications of imminent sign off on building permits, we are ready to start preparing the site to break ground. Our ceremonial groundbreaking is scheduled to take place in two weeks on April 7th. With the current state of the pandemic rules and guidelines in Toronto, uh, we remain limited to 10 people at the gathering. As much as we envisioned this ceremonial event to be open for all to join, um, we are thrilled that Estonia's ambassador to Canada, Thomas Duk, will be in attendance, as well as Toronto City Councillor for Annex Area, in which guest schools will be located, Mike Layton. It's a far cry from the party we all want to have, but pictures will be shared. With that, over to Gaidi Colford, who is a board member of the Estonian Art Centre, the charity associated with guest schools, to update us on the capital campaign. I'll just play a quick clip here. Over to you, Kylie. I'm excited to be here and share our capital campaign progress. I've been reflecting a lot on what Geskos means to me and as donors, we're investing in the longevity of our community and ensuring that it not only survives, but that it also thrives. As I'm sure many of you can relate, I get quite emotional thinking about this immense cultural vision that our grandparents and others had for our community when they first arrived in Canada. And I like to think that they're proud of how we're vibrantly continuing their legacy now. I really treasured my Estonian upbringing here. And I realized after having kids that, as you can hear in the background, um, that it's so easy to take it all for granted. And this is really our chance to give back and make sure that these younger generations experience the same enriching activities like we all did, Istigo, Rafa dance but also in facilities that are current and relevant. And how cool that we're in the heart of one of the fastest growing cities in the world, 
creating an even larger scope of services and also appealing to the broader international community in a way that we never had before. I have to say, in my opinion too, I think we were a little bit insular before. And this is a place where I'm not only excited to bring my family, but also my non-Estonian friends. So now for some inspiring donation updates. Uh, Gaskos received another $1 million gift about a month ago. Just last week, another Viro Van Amad gift of $25,000. And yesterday, a Galevi Boy allowed donation of $100,000. So the capital campaign now stands at $7.2 million. What is noteworthy is that only three quarters of the monies raised are from Ontario. So Gaskos has really captured the imaginations of Estonians around the world with funds coming from across Canada, the US, England, France, and more. So with that, and also with the uncertainty in, uh, in the construction materials market, we've actually decided to increase our capital campaign goal to $10 million. This will help strengthen our ability to ensure proper reserve for the first year of operations. The Estonian Arts Centre has also engaged Daimi Hooper to run the donations management. So you'll know that you know that you'll be in good hands when you write to donations at estoniancenter.ca. And I'll just repeat that, donations at estoniancenter.ca. So please do. We have several seats available at the Galevi Boy Allowed which is for donations over $100,000. And Viro Van Amad are always warmly added for those able to contribute $10,000 or more. And if you think about it, it's actually quite easy to become a Viro Van Am. So if you have two siblings and the three of you put aside $3 a day, you can pay off a $10,000 Viro Van Am commitment in three years. And then you can dedicate that contribution to a dear um, family member. So closing up, where will the campaign go from here? We're hoping to launch a public campaign, which will be a very exciting initiative right before we all head off to our cottages this summer. Uh, again, please sign up for our newsletter on the estoniancenter.ca website and keep apprised of our interesting approach to the public campaign that we're developing. I'll now throw it over to David to provide some project updates. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Kalm. I'm the development manager for the project. I am very happy to be presenting this evening. Um, we, it's been a while since we've touched base, so I'd like to just uh, focus on a few things that we've achieved since our last update. Um, we have uh, finished the uh, corporate structure for the, for the uh, entire center. Um, it is now in its final uh, form. It's uh, you're familiar with this drawing, I'm sure, but it's with still Toronto, uh, Estonian House in Toronto Limited as the parent company and uh, with two subsidiaries. One is the International Estonian Centre, which is the uh, operations arm, and then the Estonian Arts Centre, which is the charitable arm. And it's the International Estonian Centre I'd like to talk to, uh, talk about a little bit uh, going forward. If we could, next slide, please. Um, we've set up our project management chain and uh, for the I, for IEC or International Estonian Centre Inc. Um, the management chain, of course, has the board at the top and uh, the architect and myself, the development manager in the middle. And we will be the hub of the management chain that will uh, uh, take direction from IEC as well as a working group, which is a subcommittee uh, made up of uh, members of both boards and, and some of the members of steering committee. And um, uh, together we will manage a construction manager in the middle there who will manage the day-to-day -day construction operations on site. Um, the construction manager is uh, what I'd like to talk about next. If we can advance the slide. We've awarded that uh, position now to a company called Harbridge and Cross they're a mid-sized contractor. They're uh, a long-standing contractor. They've been in business for over 50 years. They're a $60 million company with uh, over 50 employees. They have a lot of UFT experience, hospital experience, and TTC experience, which made them a very good fit for our build. Um, the good news is with our construction budget being at about $20 million for the center, that's the hard construction costs, it makes us a significant part of that company's year. 
and also allows us to um, uh, kind of command the attention that we need from our contractor to make sure that this build goes smoothly. And as such, uh, we've been uh, guaranteed that we have some senior management assigned to Gescus. And um, uh, so that's very comforting to know that we're dealing with the top of the company opposite uh, our construction issues. Lastly, we've gone with construction management as opposed to uh, general contract. And what that means is that the contractor actually works for a fee and not for a profit. So he's on a fixed fee and that means he's not motivated by extras. It also allows uh, for a very open book relationship between the owner and the constructor. If we could go to the next slide. This is the contract chain. So of course the contract from Harbridge and Cross is with the Project Co, which is uh, IEC Inc. And, um, and then all the subcontractors are actually contracted directly with Harbridge and Cross. Um, Harbridge and Cross then in the eyes of the WSIB become the contractor and um, basically all the safety issues and everything become their responsibility. And it keeps IEC out of that uh, risk area. What we're focusing on right now is uh, all those little red lines at the bottom of the screen, which represent uh, the contracts between the subcontractors and the builder. And uh, that is done through a tender. And so we are currently actively tendering. If we could go to the next screen, um, we're, we're concentrating on the major contracts right now. So stuff like excavation, foundations, concrete, steel, and glass. Uh, we are actively looking for Estonian content wherever we can get it. And um, we're, we're working with a glazing company called Windor out of uh, Tallinn right now. And that, that's very exciting uh, for us to be doing that. Uh, the second phase will concentrate on, on the later trades in the build, which is mostly the finishes, interior and interior finishes. And again, we are looking for Sto Estonian content there. Uh, we are working with Estonia's Ministry of Estonian Affairs to identify Estonian suppliers uh, for items like wood, furniture, speakers, and tech. Uh, moving on, I'll just quickly touch on the schedule. Uh, as said earlier, we're, we're just on the cusp of starting construction. We're, uh, if you look on the, uh, at, um, between March, April on 2021, you'll see that our, our uh, planning process is coming to a close. Uh, all of those approvals are pending on uh, TTC approval, which is uh, uh, for in the foreseeable future. And then we will start construction. And without boring you with all the detail, um, it looks like we're uh, uh, ready to land at move in in around the end of the second quarter of 2022. And with that, that's the, really the end of my quick update. Thank you, David. Thank you to each of the donors. Thank you so very much for contributing to this cause to make this center be the absolute best it can be. Thank you. Veiko, I'd like to uh, ask you if you would make, uh, if you had any further remarks or, or to um, wrap the session up. Sure. Well, very quickly, I would like to uh, very much thank the ambassador for uh, attending and providing the opening uh, remarks. I'd like to thank all of the, the great panelists for the updates and thank you to all of you uh, for attending. And just a, um, a quick note on upcoming events here on the 13th of April, there is a, um, a virtual forum being organized by the Estonian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And of course, it's it's very heartening to see uh, how much energy the project uh, and, and traction the project is gaining in Esti, as uh, Sursadik uh, Luk was, was talking about. Um, he, uh, Ellen and I were on a call with the foreign minister, I think last week or the week before. And there's, there's also been a lot of back and forth with other ministries and other uh, organizations in Esti. So the, the Estonian foreign ministry is taking a very um, active role in in uh, taking interest in the role of uh, Valley Seisti Kokokonnat. And uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, at this April 13th virtual forum that they'll be organizing, uh, Ellen will be presenting updates on the uh, 
on the Estonian Centre as part of that virtual forum as well. So I think it, it'll be in Eestikeel, uh, I suspect. So kellel on hea Eestikeele oskus ja huvi selle vastu siis kindlasti vaadake seda. We can maybe put the link into the um, into the chat box. It's at 5 p.m. AST time on April 13th. So um, it should be a, a, an interesting event. And uh, with that, uh, I think we're we're done. Thank you very much. Aita suur tänu tulemast minu poolt ka.